This is Sky Recap. Today I'm going to explain an action sci-fi thriller film called Cyborg 2 Glass Shadow. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 2074, two corporations, Pinwheel Robotics and Kobayashi Electronics vie for dominance in the market for cyborgs. These machines have been rapidly replacing humans in every line of work, from soldiers on the battlefield to the harlots at the brothels. Inside Pinwheel headquarters, the company's executives watch a screen as two cyborgs get intimate in another room. A while later, a lab technician starts counting down from 10. The female cyborg explodes when the countdown ends, obliterating herself and the male robot. Pinwheel CEO Martin Dunn notes that the female cyborg, Drina, was injected with 20 milligrams of an explosive substance called Glass Shadow. He tells the other executives another robot, Casella Cash Rees, will be injected with over 100,000 milligrams of the substance and sent to Osaka. Dunn reveals that Cash is the most sophisticated cyborg at Pinwheel, programmed to feel every human emotion such as love, hate, anger, lust, and fear. Dunn assures them that Pinwheel will soon monopolize the biotech market after Kabayashi Corporation falls. Elsewhere in the building, Cash trains in martial arts with Colton Colt Ricks. Colt manages to knock Cash down, but she kicks him in the abdomen as he tries to help her up. Cash gets on top of him and prepares to strike, but she lets her guard down when the AI dismisses the training session. Cash asks Colt about her roommate, Drina, but Colt contends that he doesn't know anything. As Colt sleeps in his room that night, an eye comes on the TV screen and observes him. The next day, Colt sees Cash being escorted by Dunn and two guards. He asks Dunn what they're planning to do to her, but Dunn stresses that it doesn't concern him. As Colt walks away, he reminds himself that he won't ever get out of pinwheel if he doesn't mind his own business. The guards take Cash to a lab, where they temporarily shut her down to modify her programming. Hours later, the eye appears on the TV screen and starts speaking to Cash. He tells Cash that she will need a human protector if she decides to escape from Pinwheel. Cash notes that she doesn't know any heroes, so the man on the screen makes a suggestion. When Cash gets out of the lab, she secretly gives Colt a matchbox. As Colt walks to his room, the mysterious man on the screen calls his attention and inquires about the item that Cash gave him. So Colt discloses that it's a matchbox. After the screen shuts down, Colt inspects the contents of the matchbox in his room and finds a message instructing him to go to Lab 9 in 1700 hours. Colt asks the AI about the penalty for intimate contact with a cyborg, so the AI informs him that violators will be incarcerated and be compelled to pay a fine in addition to reprogramming charges and legal action for product damage. The AI adds that the minimum sentence will be solitary confinement until death. Later that night, the man on the screen wakes Colt from his sleep and reminds him that he has to meet Cash in Lab 9. When he meets Cash at the lab, the man appears on another screen, so Colt asks him how he manages to get around. The man reveals that he can communicate with anyone inside Pinwheel and has operatives outside. Colt asks Cash if she's seen the man before, so she shares that he talks to her at night. A door to another room suddenly opens, and the man advises them to go inside. The pair find themselves in a storage lab where they see Drina's shattered parts. Suddenly, Drina comes online and tells Cash that the company disposed of her and warns her that she's next. The man on the screen reveals that Cash has been injected with Glass Shadow because she is a corporate counter-espionage unit. He notes that Dunn will send her to Osaka in two days to pose as an American investor at Kabayashi Corporation. The man stresses that Cash is programmed to self-detonate during a meeting with the executives to kill the company's entire chain of command. The crisis would allow Pinwheel to take over the company when their stock value plummets. The man asks Cash to make a decision and start counting down from 5. Upon finishing the countdown, the man reveals that Cash has been reported stolen and Colt has been declared as the thief. Soon, the alarm starts blaring, so Cash and Colt make their way to a freight elevator. On their way, they encounter guards who try to shoot them, but one of them notes that they can't fire because they need the cyborg undamaged. As Cash beats up the guards, another tries to sneak up on Colt, but he manages to fend him off. When more guards arrive, Cash throws a weapon at one of them, hitting him in the arm and causing him to fire at the men behind him. Cash and Colt eventually get inside the elevator, but it stops midway. Cash opens the hatch on the ceiling, but they see guards descending on the cables, so Colt instructs her to check the building's schematics in her system to find another way to escape. Cash discovers another hatch under the floorboard, so Colt immediately breaks the board to open it. Cash soon goes down and breaks through an exhaust fan on the wall. Colt follows her and finds that they ended up in a trash shoot room. The guards try going after them, but a woman waiting by the shaft kills them. Cash and Colt get out of the chute by clinging to a trash can that shoots out of the building. 
Soon after breaking out of the pinwheel compound, Cash turns on a TV to communicate with the man on the screen. As Colt speaks with the man, Cash gets agitated after detecting that the glass shadow has been activated. The man notes that Cash still has about 9 hours before detonation and advises her to stay calm because the signal is trying to disorient her to prevent her from escaping. The man instructs the pair to find someone named Wildcard at a warehouse downtown and go to the city museum in the south sector. Before leaving, Colt asks the man who he is, so he discloses that his name is Mercy. Later, Dunn meets with Chen, the woman in the elevator shaft. He instructs her to intercept Cash, replace the pinwheel detonator, and kill Colt. Chen expresses concern that the pinwheel board members might want their cyborg back, but Dunn tells her not to worry because he intends to destroy Cash, Pinwheel, and Kobayashi at the same time. During a meeting with the board members, Dunn warns them that sending pinwheel security after Cash will alert hackers. Dunn surmises that Cash is not responding to the glass shadow activation warning because the emotion that drove her to escape is probably overriding her self-preservation instincts. He suspects that Kobayashi Corporation might be responsible for helping Cash and Cult escape, so he suggests hiring a man who has experience hunting down cyborgs. Dunn contacts the notorious bounty hunter Daniel Bench and asks him if he's still active. Daniel notes that he took a 5 year hiatus because his face was ruined during a job, but he assures him that he's back after some expensive surgeries. After negotiating the price, Dunn tells Daniel that he must find a female cyborg and a male human. Colt and Cash soon reach the warehouse, but Cash decides to go alone, noting that hackers are targeting a couple. As Colt waits in their vehicle, Mercy goes online and warns him that a professional cyborg tracker might already be on their tail. While Cash waits for Wildcard to appear, she encounters a Chinese fortune teller who offers her a job. However, Cash gets suspicious when the fortune teller suddenly grabs her hand tight. When Cash breaks her hand, the fortune teller's assistant gets up and engages her in a fight, but Cash beats her with ease. Cash proceeds to knock out the doorman before fleeing from the warehouse. As Colt wanders the streets outside, Daniel sees him and asks him for a light. While Colt lights a cigarette, Daniel points a gun at him and asks him to cuff himself. Afterward, Daniel takes Colt inside the warehouse to look for cash. He shows a badge to the doorman, but the doorman immediately realizes it's fake. Daniel shoots the doorman dead and leaves the warehouse with Colt. While Cash is searching for Colt, Chen sees her from a rooftop, so she catches her by the neck with a lasso. As Chen pulls on the rope, Cash swings around the alley and winds up at an apartment. Meanwhile, Daniel takes Colt into a corner of an alley and instructs him to cuff himself to a bar. Daniel continues interrogating Colt to find out Cash's location. When Colt refuses to tell him, Daniel shoots a tracker into his eye. Chen takes Cash to a van to replace her glass shadow detonator. When Cash goes online, she asks Chen if she can remove the explosive, but Chen points out that it has been implanted in her entire system. Chen informs her that the detonation clock in her vision will run until it hits zero, but the bomb will not explode. However, Chen activates the timer again with her detonator to demonstrate that she is in control. After deactivating the bomb, Chen asks Cash to give her information about her partner. She offers to give Cash safe passage out of the country if she divulges his location. When Daniel falls asleep, Colt picks the lock of his handcuffs and sneaks away. As soon as Colt leaves, Daniel opens his eyes and looks at his tracker to find out where he's going. Cash meets Colt at the museum and immediately detects the tracker in his eye, so she advises him to stay in the dark and avoid revealing any landmarks to keep the tracker off their trail. While waiting to hear from Mercy, Colt reveals that he hated all the cyborgs at Pinwheel because he thinks they're the company's attempt at playing God. He thought that the cyborgs were just twisted versions of Pinocchio, but he changed his mind once he got to know Cash. Colt notes that he was scared when he started having feelings for her because he thought that Pinwheel was getting better at playing God. He stresses that he's now more afraid for Cash than he is for himself because he knows what kind of treachery the company is capable of. Daniel soon arrives at the museum and witnesses them kissing. Suddenly, Chen turns up and starts shooting at the couple. After Colt and Cash escape, Daniel and Chen fire at each other. While Daniel is hiding behind a glass display, Chen shoots the glass and Daniel screams in pain as the shards pierce his reconstructed face. Chen soon catches Colton Cash in an exhibit of a typical American home and fires her weapon at them. After Chen stops shooting, Cash engages Chen in hand-to-hand -hand combat and manages to disarm her. When Chen knocks her down, Colt joins the fight, but she blocks his attacks and beats him. Cash eventually gets back up only to be slammed against the kitchen counter. As Chen attempts to maim Colt, Cash gets up and kicks her to the wall. Due to the force of the kick, Chen goes through the wall and gets electrocuted upon hitting the fuse box. The two discover that Chen is a cyborg as she tears open her skin. On their way out of the museum, Colt and Cash come across a synthetic dog. Cash figures that Mercy must have sent him, so they follow the dog to a tunnel. The dog leads them to an abandoned shipyard called Town Down. 
When they get in touch with Mercy inside a ship, he informs them that the boat he rented to take them out of the country burned down. Mercy has used up his last money, so he advises Colt to participate in a snuff combat called the Blade to get money for another boat. He explains that the fight takes place under the propeller of a dry dock ship, and only one of the two fighters will eventually come out. Colt is hesitant to sign up, but Mercy points out that it's the only way to get to Mombasa, the only free zone for unlicensed cyborgs. Later, Daniel contacts Dunn to inform him that he has raised his fee and retrieval of the cyborg is no longer an option. The board members decide to fire him, but Daniel hints that he'll keep on pursuing Cash to destroy her. While Wildcard takes off the tracker from Colt's eye, Mercy warns Cash that their love will end up in a tragedy because Cash can live for a millennium and stay young, but Colt will grow old and die. He tells Cash that their love can only survive if one of them crosses over and lives the time of their beloved. After the operation on Colt, Cash asks Wildcard about Mercy's history, so he discloses that he used to command the fleet. When Mercy was wounded in battle, the Navy decided to rebuild him with cyborg parts. However, Mercy soon became a renegade. Wildcard reveals that Mercy became a gunrunner in the Middle East and led a coup in Mozambique. Colt notices a picture of a woman beside his bed, so Mercy tells him that she's his deceased wife, Velma. He notes that Velma is a cyborg searching for a better world, so she spent her time helping renegade robots escape from Pinwheel. Mercy recounts that Daniel eventually caught Velma, but not before she inflicted severe injuries on him. Mercy instructs Colt to take the ring from his drawer, noting that there's something he must do before going into battle. Later, Colt puts the ring on Cash's finger and makes love to her. At the same moment, Mercy sits in the cockpit staring at a picture of his wife. Colt and Cash soon head to a ship called the Dragon to meet with the fighter promoter Bobby Lynn. Colt immediately asks Lynn about his opponent's record, so Lynn informs him that he's also a newcomer. Afterward, Lynn heads to another room to inform Daniel that everything has been set. As they prepare for the fight, Lynn tells Colt that the first round will have no blades while round two will have only one. Both of the ship's blades will be activated during round three and the final round. Daniel and Colt soon go to the dock to fight after hearing the bell. Colt strikes the first blow and knocks Daniel down, but Daniel gets back up and twists his arm. At the end of the round, pinwheel operatives arrive and move into the pier to search for Cash. The second round soon starts, and the two men return to the dock to continue fighting. When Colt manages to knock Daniel to the ground, Daniel grabs a wooden plank and hits him in the head. Daniel pins Colt to the wall next to the running blade, but Colt hits him in the face and breaks free. Colt bashes Daniel's head against the wall until the round ends. When the third round begins, Daniel uses a brass knuckle with a knife to attack Colt. Cash tries to help, but Lynn warns her that Colt will be disqualified if she interferes. Daniel attempts to stab Colt, but he grabs Daniel's arm and pushes him toward the blades. Daniel screams in pain as the running blades crush his face. Soon, the operatives arrive and throw a grenade at the dock, so Cash grabs the money from Lynn's hands and flees with Colt. Two operatives chase after them, but Cash manages to knock down one of them and grab his gun. After shooting the other operative, the couple makes their way to the yard. When the operatives catch up to them, Colt stops Cash from shooting at them, fearing they'll fire back. Cash assures him that they won't damage her because she's expensive, but one operative shoots Colt in the leg instead. As the soldiers surround them, Mercy appears on a TV screen and commands Colt for winning the fight. Then, Mercy detonates an explosive nearby to distract the operatives and allow the couple to escape. Soon, Mercy comes out of hiding and fires grenades at them. As he deals with the operatives, Colt and Cash make their way to the boat that will take them to Mombasa. Despite the fight he put up against the operatives, Mercy gets caught and delivered to Pinwheel's headquarters. Dunn shows him Chen's detonator and shares that it has a 2,000 mile range. He then pushes the button, expecting that it will detonate Cash's glass shadow, but the device activates the explosive inside Mercy. A moment later, the bomb explodes and destroys the pinwheel facility. Cash and Colt soon reach Mombasa and start living in peace on a remote property. As the decades pass, Colt grows old and frail, but Cash never leaves his side. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.